What's up guys, it's Prashant here. Welcome to my YouTube channel and thank you for joining me in today's video. Today I'm going to be telling you about my all-time favorite personal finance books. This is a set of books that I have read personally and enjoyed thoroughly. These books have been instrumental in getting me started on my personal finance journey and have taught me a lot of what I know today. Not only will I be telling you about these books, I will also be giving you a brief summary about each of these books so you know exactly what you're getting into. I will also be leaving links in the description from Amazon so you can buy them there if you want. Now let us get into talking about these books right after you smash the like button and the subscribe button. Seriously you guys, I have been hovering just under 200 subscribers for a long time now and it would mean a lot to me if we can get me to 200 subscribers. So just go ahead and click the subscribe button, okay? Great, let's get into it. The very first book that I want to talk about is a very popular book when it comes to personal finance. In fact, I'm sure that every personal finance YouTuber has read this book and you've probably already heard about it. You guessed it, I'm talking about Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. This is a book that my dad tried to get me to read when I was a teenager, but unfortunately I just didn't get into it at that time. I wish I'd read it back then, but I'm glad that I read it when I did. I bought my copy in 2018 and read it on a long flight. At this time, I was already cognizant about treating money the right way and reading this book helped me organize my thoughts about that a little bit more clearly. I like this book a lot because it is written in very easy to understand simple language. It is written as a personal story and conveys important lessons about money through that story. If I had to summarize the teachings of this book in one sentence, it would be this, and I quote, the poor and middle classes work for money. The rich make their money work for them. What this means is that if you want to be rich, building passive income streams is very, very important. You see, when you have a job, you're exchanging your time for money, and there's nothing wrong with this. The problem is that there are only a finite number of hours every day, and you cannot really work all 24 hours out of the day either. So there is a somewhat finite limit as to what you can make. With passive income though, you can send your money to go and make you even more money. A couple of ways of how to do this is by using stocks such as with dividend investing, or by using rental real estate. The second book that I wanna talk about is The Warren Buffett Way, by Robert G. Hagstrom Jr. This is a book that I actually listened to for the first time on an audiobook that I bought from the library. And I liked it so much that I ended up going to the local used bookstore and buying my very own copy. This book, of course, is about the legendary investor Warren Buffett and his company Berkshire Hathaway. Reading this book gave me a lot of perspective back in 2017 when I needed it the most. At this time, I'd been investing for about a year and I'd had some moderate wins but also some reasonable losses. In fact, I think I was just lucky and it was that luck that kept me from not losing all of the money that I invested in the stock market at the time. Reading this book showed me how Warren Buffett was able to build up Berkshire and his personal wealth using a slow, methodical, and meticulous process. His whole mantra is to buy good companies at discounted prices and just hold them for the long term. Reading this book taught me the importance of thinking of investing as a long game to be played over decades before finally selling your stocks and enjoying the proceeds. When I read this book, I realized exactly how complicated stock picking is and how childish my way of just looking at P over E ratio was. I figured that Warren Buffett is much smarter at this than I am. After all, he was worth more than $50 billion at the time. And I decided to simply invest in his company instead. So over the next few years, I invested $3,600 in Berkshire Hathaway Class B stock. And I made $1,600 on it, not bad. I only stopped investing in Warren Buffett's company after he himself said that investors might be better off investing in just the S&P 500 instead of his own company. This is because of their very unique, very large cash position problem. This is something that I will be talking about in another video in greater detail. After this announcement, I actually pivoted and started investing heavily in the S&P 500. The third and final book that I want to talk about is Unconventional Success by David F. Swenson. This is a book that I got as a birthday present in 2019 from my mother-in-law because I specifically asked for this book. She probably thinks I'm the most boring man on the planet for asking this book as a present, but believe me, this is one of the best books I've read ever. If you don't know, Dave Swenson was the endowment manager of Yale. He took this job in 1985 when Yale's endowment fund was worth $1 billion. In 2019, Yale's endowment fund was $30 billion. He 30 x that money. Now you might be thinking, Prashant, what's the big deal? People did that with Bitcoin or even Dogecoin. Yes, but not in the billions. It's a completely different game at this scale. 
Anyway, this book is definitely a technically complex one. But if you wanted to understand the basic concepts of investing, including several different types of securities, such as stocks, bonds, options, and the like, this is an excellent resource for you. This book explains everything in minute detail with tons of research and data included in the book. This book even shows you how you can set up your own portfolio. I'm not kidding. Go buy this book and open page 84. There's a table right there that shows you what a well-diversified portfolio should look like. Reading this book gave me the understanding I needed to make my own investment decisions and feel committed to them even when the market was in the red. Because I had read this book and had my investment plans laid out, when the market dipped back in March of 2020 because of the lockdowns, I was able to hold steady and did not sell any of my stock. In fact, I was able to increase my stock holdings throughout 2020, which has been very beneficial to me. I give complete credit to all of my investment gains over the last two years to this book right here. So that's all I have for you guys in today's video. I hope you found this video useful and I hope you read at least one of the books that I mentioned in today's video. If you wanna buy them, you can always use the links down in the description below. Don't forget to check out the free personal finance 101 guide that I have created for my viewers, which is linked down in the description below. Please smash the like button and the subscribe button for the YouTube algorithm and click the bell icon to be notified instantly when I post a new video. I upload at least one new video every week with great new financial content and I would love to see you back here. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram, links to those in the description down below as well. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.